Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing about this Model X that I bought from Tesla, but don't worry, the end is near and I'll start getting back into builds soon. As of right now, I don't have the car yet after over two months of waiting, and if you aren't up to speed, I bought a used Tesla Model X directly from Tesla, at least I tried to, and if you haven't seen my last two videos, the recap is, in October of 2018, I went online, found a pre-owned Tesla Model X, requested photos, never got them, hit the buy button figuring I could fix anything wrong with it because that's what I do. I asked several more questions that were unanswered and started to get random texts on my phone saying the car was ready. Then afterwards when I verified that, they said, sorry, the car is not ready because they don't have the title. Halfway through the sales process, I was sent a Dropbox link to lackluster photos of the Model X where I couldn't even tell if there was any damage besides a close-up of the rims which looked like they fell off of a moving truck. I released a video expressing some of my concerns months after I purchased the car, and the next day I got an email from a higher up at Tesla saying he's going to make things right. He said the car should be ready by Thursday. Then on Friday, he said, just kidding, it's going to take more time because they want to make sure the car is perfect. He offered me a loaner car to use, so I got excited, asked my mom for a ride an hour away from my house, and then when I showed up with my mom to get the loaner car, they looked at me like I was crazy and said they had no loaner car available. Then my mom said this. He trying to send people in the space and he can't put you in a car? What kind of businessman is he? <laughs> huh? I mean, you want me to call him? And that's where we left off. Now to clear a few things up before I start this episode, everyone's saying how I'm too calm. Well, I'm calm because this is a first world problem. It's annoying, it's frustrating, and downright negligence at this point, but somewhere in the world there's a family struggling to put food on the table, and at the other end of the world there's a man that just threw half of his steak away at a fancy restaurant because he was too full from his last meal. This, my friends, is not that big of a deal. Everyone wants a Tesla, but no one needs one. Keep that in mind. Number two, to all the fanboys saying I'm a Tesla hater, I own Tesla stock that I'm holding on to, and I'm doing this because I want them to do better. Now, after the loaner car fiasco when Tesla tried to make things right and ended up making things much, much worse, the same higher up at Tesla that I've been speaking with took a plane, flew from California to Boston once he heard the service I received, which is actually kind of crazy and is much appreciated. However, why spend all that money flying six hours on a plane plus food and hotel and lost productivity with his actual job when they could have just discounted the car? But anyways, he came to oversee the completion and repair my Model X and he apologized up and down and said, surprise, surprise, we're giving you a loaner Model X to use while mine was getting ready. But I declined and here's why. Number one, I'm not falling for that again. Number two, I didn't need the car. Number three, I didn't want to get settled and used to a temporary loaner vehicle or having to remove the child seats and doing my best to avoid getting any dings or dents on this loaner vehicle because I had a feeling that this loaner car was likely already a sold vehicle on Tesla's website. Number four, I told him specifically that I am not the only person having this issue. Please give this Model X to someone that is waiting for a loaner car and needs it more than I do. I don't need this loaner X. It's a friendly gesture, but it's not the car I bought. As of right now, still no sign of the car I bought, but my mission in this episode is to find it. Now let's get into where the breakdown is and how confusing things are at Tesla. Now from the time I bought the car to now, I've heard from eight people. The first person was a random voicemail saying thanks for buying the car that I never heard from him again. The second person I heard from was my delivery advisor. The third person, my finance guy. The fourth person, a guy I had a really cool conversation with but had no idea what he did and I never heard from him again. Number five, the tow truck driver that I never heard from again. Six, the big shot of Tesla that's helping me out right now. Seven, another person at the store that told me I was SOL. And eight, the guy that was going to bring me my loaner. This is a textbook example of the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing. Why am I in contact with so many people I have no idea? So I decided to look at a few jobs from Tesla to see what the requirements are for these positions. Because one in particular that I met in person, communication wasn't their strong suit. So I went online and looked up the job responsibilities and they are as follows. Process incoming ownership transfer documents, reassign titles from all 50 states, identify and resolve trade and related issues, work closely with our DMV compliance team, match sold titles with records of sale, work closely with regional and store level management, and identify root cause issues. The requirements, all you need is a high school diploma or one year working in an office. Now, no offense, but I was in high school, and I remember how I was, and to be honest, these requirements are what you would need to work at your local grocery store, not a high-end auto manufacturer. But it's okay, I get it, Tesla is trying to save money, and you probably don't have to pay them much. 
but that's the overall theme I've been seeing and hearing about when visiting other Tesla showrooms and service centers. During the last round of layoffs, when they got rid of a lot of day one people, they replaced them with individuals for low money with no real customer service experience. Now, I was doing some thinking about how things operate here, and things start going wrong the second you do this. Hit the buy button. At a normal dealership, they have new cars and used cars, and they're typically sold by two different parts of the dealer. Sometimes two different buildings on the same property, but Tesla doesn't do that well because the cars are made to order. There is an inventory just laying around so they can afford to have these tiny showrooms and keep four cars in them just for show and maybe for a couple of test drives. Now, that's the hard part, is used cars. A lot of people are leasing Teslas and many people just trade in their four-year-old Teslas for a new one. So where do they go when people return a used Tesla? That's a good question and I'll answer that later. When I first purchased my Model X from Tesla, you hit the request photos and you get these photos from Dropbox. Probably the most unprofessional series of photos that you'll get from a major car manufacturer. They even have the image numbers on them, which makes for a really high quality look and feel. Now they're kind of crummy, and in this photo the damaged ruler isn't even near the damage, and I don't even know where this is on the car. The next photo here, there's a wavy line in the passenger door. I'm thinking there's damage here, but you really can't tell due to the lighting. You'll also see that the falcon wing door is misaligned, and if you look at this photo, you'll see a tiny dent in the tailgate, and on the second angle of the door, you'll see it's actually kind of banged up. But honestly, I'll take these crummy photos over what you get when you buy a car from Tesla in the UK. You get nothing. It's as if they're saying, shut up and just buy the car. Now this SUV is selling for real money, folks. So why is it that I could go on Craigslist and get full walk around outside photos of a 15 year old Mercedes E-Class that's selling for seven grand? Now why aren't these photos on Tesla's website? Why are they coming from a Dropbox link of all things that look like they were taken in the cave? Well, let's take a closer look at these pictures. If you look at the ruler, you'll see the word Mannheim, and if you zoom in on the GPS screen, you'll also see where the car says it's in Newburgh, New York. So it's at Mannheim in New York. What is Mannheim? Well, it's an auction house, and if you look at the other Teslas selling in the Northeast, they're only really selling in New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts, which are all states with Mannheim locations. Mannheim is an auction house that helps Tesla sell their cars. Now, every Tesla location I've been to is the size of a postage stamp, so Mannheim stores the used cars, takes photos, and fulfills the Dropbox request. So if we go to Mannheim's website under their enhanced vehicle imaging, you'll see that Tesla probably pays Mannheim $50 for 15 showroom photos. I personally think these photos are not of showroom quality, so Tesla, please go talk to Mannheim about that. So you request photos of the car, get these crummy photos, and say to yourself, you know what, I trust Mannheim and Tesla, the dynamic duo, I want the car anyways. So you hit the buy button, and depending on if you buy new or used, that's when the confusion starts. You have to talk to customer experience specialists, owner advisors, delivery experience specialists, finance analysts, delivery advisors, and judging by the emails that are sent back and forth from the last episode, they don't look like they're talking to each other, and they're from different parts of the United States. So after you talk to one and sometimes all of these people, you realize that you are spending a lot of money on this car, and sometimes photos don't do it justice. So you request additional photos of said vehicle, and I was told, not at this time. Which I kind of get because Tesla doesn't have much control over this step. You have the person, which is likely your delivery advisor for remarketing, reach back out to the people at Mannheim, request more photos, and this means that the guy from Mannheim has to go back out to the lot, take more photos of the car, and re-upload them to Dropbox, which isn't going to happen anytime soon. So you have this car that you really want, which is several hours away at Mannheim, and it's pretty damn expensive. So expensive that your expectations are higher than the Dropbox cave photos you got and you really want to see this thing in person before you take the dive. So you reach out to the person you've been emailing you with about the car and decide that you're buying a plane ticket to fly out and see the car, which is what a lot of people do. The answer, no, you cannot. The car is in an auction house limited to dealers only and no additional photos unless you get super lucky. So you have to make sure that those 20 photos they give you are enough to make your decision and this is a pretty big problem. So I bit the bullet anyways, it was a good price, and I figured Tesla would make their best effort to recondition the car. Tesla is known for taking their used car inventory and making them almost brand new again. If there's a tear in the seat, you get a new seat, and if there are issues with the body or scratches, Tesla takes care of those as well. I've heard great things about Tesla's CPO program, so I wasn't concerned. And if you know what, even if they didn't do anything, which I doubt, I'd still take it because it was a good price. Now, the series of events that occurred from when I hit the buy button to now were covered in the last two videos, and it was quite the roller coaster. 
We fast forward to today, and after speaking with the person at my closest service center, I asked where the car was, and they responded with, I don't know. The higher up at Tesla says my car would take more time because it needed an alignment and had two bald front tires and would need to go in for body work to correct a few minor things. Again, this all seems strange because I thought that these things were addressed before the car was even listed for sale. I thought these things were standard in the automotive industry with a certified pre-owned vehicle. Tesla offers a 70-point vehicle inspection for a used vehicle, and no one except Tesla knows what the 70 things are that Tesla looks for. When asked for a copy of an inspection report on a used car, they said no, and when asked for a printout of the 70 things they look for, they refused to tell you. However, when I called BMW and asked for what they look for before sending one of their cars out the door, this is what they send you. Everything from last service date, wiper condition, tire inspection, body panel alignment, overall fit and finish, glove box, weather seals, seat creases, headliner condition, not to mention a full 20 minute minimum road test to check for squeaks, rattles, wind noise, and they require the service history printout. Now at this point, I have a feeling a new Tesla wouldn't pass BMW's 120 point used car inspection. But anyways, no worries, it's getting fixed. But I need to see this thing. I need to see the vehicle that's been causing me so much gripe over the last couple months. Since the higher up says the car is getting body work done, I searched for the nearest authorized Tesla body shop near the service center. I drove the hour and a half and was taking it to a yard with a whole bunch of Teslas outside, but I didn't see my car. I walked into the office and I said, hey, I think my blue Model X with black 22s is here. And probably one of the nicest guys I've talked to in a long time said, you must be very important because I get multiple phone calls about the status of this car per day. Now, I felt special for about three seconds. And then he led me to the car, and this is a quick walk around of it. The rims were refinished as promised. The brake rotors needed some love because there's excessive rust buildup around the center of the rotor. If you look around the back, it's marked that there's condensation on the inner and outer of the driver's side light. An adorable little dent on the hatch which barely showed up in the photos. And another sign that says condensation in the passenger side taillight. And then the most fun part is the dent in the door that will need to be removed and refinished. But besides that, isn't she great looking? Now yes, it would have been nice to show these marks when it was at Mannheim. But again, this is what you get when you buy a car sight unseen. Now this time I'm thinking to myself there's no possible way that a major manufacturer can sell a car like this. What happened to Tesla reconditioning cars so that they're certified pre-owned? So I started doing some digging and of course I'm late to the party. Tesla doesn't sell certified pre-owned cars anymore. They sell used cars. How did I find this out? A late night tweet from Elon Musk over a year ago. I have to Google tweets from Elon Musk to find these major changes at Tesla out. Apparently it caused quite the frenzy because Tesla employees were busy pressing control F to find and replace the letter CPO with the word used on their website. Now my question is, how does one just stop a CPO program? How do you just stop selling quality used cars, which are a representation of your brand? If you were to suddenly stop the certified pre-owned BMW program, and one day a customer asked, hey, why is there a dent the size of a baseball in this car? And the manager says, we don't do certified anymore. We only do BMW used cars. Go look at the CEO of BMW's Twitter account for more information. That probably wouldn't go over very well. As a matter of fact, even Kia has a certified pre-owned cars that sell for a fraction of the price and they have better photos. Now, I'm not nitpicky by any means, but I'm going to have to put this in the embarrassing category. After some quick searching, this isn't an uncommon thing either. They usually don't even wash the car and one lucky guy uncovered hidden features in his pre-owned car, such as crumbs in the back seat, candy wrappers in the door, free water under the driver's seat, fish hooks and goldfish in the back, a dirty paper towel in the front seat, and the best feature of all, the complimentary toenail clippings in the seat tracks. This car's price, $70,000. What would happen if you go to a Mercedes or BMW or Audi dealership and purchase a $70,000 used car? Probably not this. But then again, Tesla's disrupting the market, their cars are selling like crazy, and maybe in a few years, Audi will start trashing their interiors as well and not letting you see the car before you buy it too. Now, I understand that Tesla has a direct sales model to keep, but I don't think it'd be a terrible idea to bring the used car sales back in-house. Right now, there are literally thousands of Teslas in random dirt lots all over the country because Tesla's too proud to admit they need help with the distribution of their inventory. For example, when my friend bought his Model X for $118,000, he was handed the keys, driven to a dirt lot with a bunch of other Teslas. They pointed to his car and asked if he had any questions. He said he probably would, and the person dropped him off and said, 
talk to your salesperson. Now, adding Mannheim to the equation is just adding the middleman to already complex puzzle, which is something Tesla said they didn't want to do. I think Tesla should have a used car center instead of a dirt lot to have their cars just sitting there, providing a better experience than seeing photos online of a car that you'll never see or drive until you pay for the car in full. But either way, guys, that was a mouthful. I don't want to bore you all to death. And surprise, surprise, as I was making this video, I got an email from the same higher up stating the car will be ready as soon as this week. I am personally excited about this. However, as soon as this week could also mean as late as June. So, fingers crossed, I'll keep you all posted. Will it go smoothly this time? Will Tesla make any more mistakes? Subscribe and find out. I will see you all soon.